Hi there, I'm Ken Benjamin from the London Institute for Contemporary Christianity and it's great to be bringing this message to you today. In everything, may your authority transform, revive and heal society. Hopefully, you've just heard or sung this song, We Seek Your Kingdom. If you heard the version, it's beautifully sung by Donna Akodu, Lou Fellingham, Andy Flanagan and Noel Robinson, with familiar tune to it too of abide with me, even tide, such that we hope it, it, it stays with you and it, and it resonates. The key element for me in that song depends on the truth, thy kingdom come, we seek your kingdom. So it very much connects with the thy kingdom come initiative and movement, a prayer initiative. Both the song and the prayer initiative draw from the same roots though, don't they? They draw inspiration from the prayer that Jesus taught us, his disciples, to pray, including that second line in the second verse, if we take it from Matthew, Matthew 6 and verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here's what I want us to do. If we see this root where the song comes from and see that the song is really a prayer, and consider the Thy Kingdom Come prayer initiative comes from the same route too. Maybe if we look at it in more detail, this route, we might find more there for us or be reminded of it. Maybe it's just me, but when I pray the Lord's Prayer and think of the way that we recite it in English, if any line gets said really quickly, and is in danger of being diminished while we go on to the next line, it's thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now it's not always said that way, but it could be. And if we just skim past it, we might be missing out on great richness. I'm sure we are, in fact. Jesus's words always had have more than we first noticed, don't they? Especially so with his prayers, I would want to say. And so, if we're considering this verse more fully, whilst we have the song ringing in our ears, is it possible that we can, in considering some of the context and some of the meaning, find some application for us? My prayer is that if we spend time considering your kingdom come, we seek your kingdom, then the song and our reciting of the Lord's Prayer might be all the richer for it. Okay. So thy kingdom come. The first thing I'd want us to consider is that it's words that should be grounded, grounded by earthly change. Sometimes beautiful words, especially biblical be beautiful words in a prayer, they can lose their impact if we just observe their beauty, if we elevate them to being so heavenly that we don't ground them in earthly reality, praying for an earthly difference. Thy kingdom come is a general prayer that we're asking, but it comes true in specific places or it loses its meaning. It's either a prayer we take personally or it loses its impact. It's either a prayer we want to see come true on the ground or it's meaningless surely. It's grounded in that sense that we long to see heaven's demonstration here. If it's on the ground, then all the lines in the song flow from this and make sense. Hence singing about transform, revive and heal society and wider areas, the economy and the public square, for example. We seek your kingdom throughout every sphere. We long for heaven's demonstration here including your here, wherever that is, and my here, the places where we work and rest and play, especially with those who don't yet share our faith. We should also know that your kingdom come, your will be done as on, a, on earth as in heaven, is about kingship. It's about kingdom. If it's about kingship, it's about sovereignty and authority and rule both in the world and in the hearts of people. So it's a prayer for things to change 
for the better. A kingdom always requires a monarch. So for the followers of Jesus, this is a prayer for regime change, actually. We're urged to pray that the kingdom will come and that God's will will be done here and now, increasingly so. And this kingdom clashes with alternative ways of life. And so when Jesus taught this prayer, there was an all-powerful kingdom, of course, an empire at least, the Roman Empire. And when Jesus introduces this prayer, the Jewish people were working out what it meant to be the people of God under these difficult circumstances. And there were different views around. So some believe that they should simply concentrate on what you could call personal piety, like religious observance. The Pharisees typically majored on keeping the letter of the law. And this was how they lived out their faith in God at that time, with the context of a big empire around. Some others thought that they should largely just accommodate to the powers around at the time. Many Sadducees thought that they should accommodate to the political powers, assimilate, if you like, and do what they're told. Some others thought things were so bad that they should just withdraw. The Essenes withdrew to the desert completely. And many others just tried to get on with their ordinary way of life as best they could, I guess. But Jesus comes and declares a different way, and that's there in his prayer, that the kingdom has arrived in and through him. So if that's true, what does that look like for more kingdom values to be evident on your front line and mine? And by front line, I mean the place in your world, in your week, where you spend most time, especially most time with people who don't yet share your faith. Because with all of those other views around, for the followers of Jesus, they're called to point another way, not to withdraw, but to engage, but to engage with his values. So when we pray or sing, thy kingdom come, we seek your kingdom, We're asking, what would it be like for the kingdom's values, his kingdom's values, to be more evident on our front line? To be more seen in change in your school, in your workplace, in your neighbourhood, in your places of interest in our nation. To be better represented, to better represent God's values. That's the prayer that we're being asked to consider. So this prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it's edgy because it's a it's about this change being increasingly seen and known. It's a, it's a cry of dissatisfaction with the way things are. This kingdom come prayer is not just expectant yearning for the coming of Christ in the future, though we pray for that too, it's longing for his values to be increasingly seen on earth now. It means praying that God's values will increasingly be seen in us and in his place. It means a a journey, a progressive journey in that direction. John Ortberg, the American speaker and author, wrote about those words, thy kingdom come. And he said, many people think our job, our job as Christians, is to get my afterlife destination taken care of and then tread water till we get ejected and God comes back and torches this place. He's using extreme language obviously but then he says but Jesus never told anybody neither his disciples nor us to pray get me out of here so I can go up there. His prayer was make up there come down here. Make things down here run the way they do up there. That's a really good way of putting it what we're praying for here. And it's so wide reaching, this prayer, every sphere. When Andy Flanagan, Noel Robinson and Graham Hunter came together to write this song, they described their aims this way. They said, we hoped that the words we wrote would articulate something of the scope and reach of the kingdom of heaven. The opening two verses were an invocation of God's presence throughout every sphere of human society. They served as an invitation and expression of our desire for God to be present and active 24-7 in every moment of every day, 
week and year. They invited God to be acknowledged in our front lines, wherever we find ourselves occupied in our everyday lives. They expressed a longing for all our creative work to be in accordance with God's economy, the logic of God's household, God's kingdom. Each of the verses concludes with the passionate prayer and petition that God would transform, revive and heal society. So the reality of this prayer is seen everywhere when it's seen in the reality of the lives of his followers. What does it mean for thy kingdom to come, for your kingdom to to come everywhere? Well, it's like when Mary changes the culture, Mary in your church, let's say, changes the culture of her workplace for the better, when the place was known for cutting corners where it shouldn't, or Jim speaking up to the procurement department to adopt a more ethical buying policy. It means Akram dealing with everybody he escorts as a clerk to the legal courts and their families and their families and friends with dignity at this crucial moment in their lives, whatever he knows or doesn't know about it. It means Sina being a messenger of peace to the other parents waiting in the playground when there's some disharmony and division around. I'm throwing out everyday examples because it could just be that some might have heard the words of this song and thought, well, that all sounds a bit too political for me. That's for some, not for me. This song invites us to consider and pray about every sphere of society, including the public square. Every sphere includes the political arena, and we should pray more for Christians who are active in that arena and pray for more Christians to be active in that arena. But this isn't a prayer to opt out of as a follower of Jesus. Praying thy kingdom come means asking the heavenly father to help us in our lives to be more faithful, obedient, authentic and effective Christians wherever we find ourselves. We spread God's kingdom not only with words but through actions and through observable Christ-like qualities we pray. If we start with a big view of thy kingdom come, we should also scale it down and make it personal. If we start with a small view of thy kingdom come, we should also scale it up. It's a macro prayer with micro implications. It's a personal prayer with public implications. As I've thought about this prayer and song, it's taken me too long, I think, to realize that at the heart of we seek your kingdom, thy kingdom come, it's asking and volunteering. Is asking because we don't fully know what it's like for God's kingdom to come, do we? We don't know what it fully looks like in every circumstance, in every situation. And so we humbly ask God, Lord, what do you want for your kingdom to come in this place? And then, of course, like so often with prayers, as we pray them, He calls us to be part of the answer to our own prayers. Have you experienced that with other prayers? I'm sure you have. It's a humbling and fascinating thing to consider that God advances his kingdom through the prayers of his people and Jesus instructs us then to be part of the answer to those prayers. Not so much that we can be arrogant, but not so small that it's insignificant. So when I'm praying thy kingdom come, I'm actually asking, how can I serve you? What do you want me to do for you and for your kingdom today? When we become Christians, we can act as though we've enlisted God into our lives, our concerns, our causes, our context. But really, when we look at the Gospels and when we look at this prayer more closely, what has really happened is that Jesus has enrolled us into his cause. We're asking, how might the atmosphere 
relationships, values, priorities, policies change for the better if the kingdom actually increasingly came to my place of work, my front line. And we're asking, what can I do to help that journey? At LICC, we often convey God's role for his people with red dots and grey dots. There are 100 dots in the image and six of those dots are red, representing the Christians, those who identify themselves as Christian and attend church either physically or online at least once a month. And we can have the view, can't we, that God's people are together and they gather in a group and they have some impact on some of the grey dots around them. And they try to attract those grey dots to come and be part of them and turn red, if you follow the image. But actually, for most of the time, that's not the reality. The reality is bigger and better. God's people are out and about in a variety of contexts, that, that word frontline again, and making contact with so many more grey dots and the potential for influence being so much greater. Now, when we pray, thy kingdom come, we're praying about those Christians, those red dots, having kingdom influence wherever they find themselves for the better in all those areas, atmosphere and relationships and values and priorities and policies and so on, out and about where he would call us to be, praying that the world would be more Christ-like through his people, including me, including you. So I want to pray based on the prayer we've been looking at, particularly picking up thy kingdom come. We seek your kingdom and, and praying some of that meaning into it. Let's pray. So Lord, we do pray. And we recognise that when we treasure your kingdom, we move closer to you, the king. Help that to be true. We seek your kingdom throughout every sphere. We long for heaven's demonstration here. And picture you're here this week. Jesus, your light shine bright for all to see. And Lord, help us to reflect your light. Transform, revive and heal society. And Lord, let that transformation be in me and let me be a means of that transformation too. We pray thy kingdom come so that your sovereign rule will come now, more tomorrow than today, starting with me, increasing in number and quality and in the future, in its fullness and permanence with Christ's return. Amen.